Hello everyone and welcome to Tutor Terrific. Today we are going to look at part three of our Solving Quadratic Equations series. It's the last part and these are the methods we are going to use when factoring is not possible or does not appear to be possible by the means in the first two parts of the series. The three types of methods we are going to look at today are solving by square roots, completing the square, and the quadratic formula. All of these, when factoring is not possible, will result in solutions that are irrational. So that means they have a square root in them. Okay, So the uh, decimal form is uh, an irrational number where the decimal does not repeat and it goes on forever. All right, guys, let's get started. First method is solving by square roots. Now, you can use the square root method in all different types of situations, including instead of the difference of squares method that I showed you in part one of this series. However, square roots is necessary when you cannot solve a difference of squares type binomial uh, with um, the difference of squares factorization. Sometimes you just have to square root. So the premise here is that you use this method when the x to the first power term is missing and you will move the constant terms to the other side and make sure all the x squared terms are on the same side. Then you'll simplify the expression if necessary and then square root. You will get two answers by doing this and I'll show you how. Let's look at the first one. Notice how it's often that solving by square roots problems are not in standard form and that's fine. You don't want them to be in standard form. You want the x squared terms on one side and the constant terms on the other. So when we look at this first problem, I'm going to add 1 to both sides to get started. Now I have x squared equals 18. Okay, now there's no simplification that I have to do. So what I'm going to do now, I'll write it over here so it's easier to see. I'm going to square root both sides, okay? Now, when I square root 18, I'm going to make sure whenever I square root a constant term in this method, I'm going to have to put a plus or minus. Why do you have to include the plus or minus? Well, let's consider, uh, for example, the square root of 9, okay? The square root of 9 is 3, but let's think about this really carefully. Couldn't it also be negative 3? Well, negative 3 times negative 3 is 9, and positive 3 times positive 3 is 9. So when you think about it, both negative 3's and positive 3's multiply by each other to get positive 9. And so that's why we include the plus or minus, so that we can include all possible ways to get 18. Okay? Now, obviously the square root of x squared is x, but let's look at 18. Now, 18 doesn't have a perfect square root, but can part of this be pulled out of the square root, factored out? 18 is 9 times 2. I can stop here because 9 is a perfect square of 3. And so I could pull out the 9, square root it as I pull it out, and make it a 3. So I need to get 3 square root 2, plus or minus. So positive root 3 over, uh, sorry, positive 3 times root 2 and negative 3 times root 2 are the solutions to this quadratic. Now let's try this more complicated one. As you can see, I've got x squared terms on both sides and I have constant terms on both sides. I'm going to simplify that first by looking at all the terms. They all have a negative sign. If I multiply through by a negative one, that means multiply everything by negative one, I will get all those negative signs to go away. And you are totally allowed to do that. So now I've multiplied through by negative one and I have everything positive. First, I'm going to move this constant term to the other side. I'm going to move the x squared term to the other side as well. Now I have 2x squared equals 6. Okay, that's a lot simpler. Then I will simplify. In this case, I have to simplify. And um, I can see I can divide by 2 here. And I get x squared equals 3. Okay, this is ready to square root. So up here, just for good measure, I'm going to create some space here. I'm going to square root both sides, and next to the constant term, I'm going to put a plus or a minus, because the reason I made clear above. Now, let's look here. x will now equal plus or minus 
root three. Okay, so that required a little bit of extra work, but this is the basic premise for solving by square roots. Absolutely necessary when you have an x squared term and a constant term if you cannot factor by the difference of squares method. All right, now here's our second method, completing the square. Now the premise of this method is that you have a quote unquote bad constant term which doesn't allow you to factor, meaning I cannot find two numbers that multiply to the constant term and add to the coefficient of the middle term. So what we will do is we'll move the bad constant term to the other side and then we will add the proper constant term so that we can make a perfect square trinomial. What's a perfect square trinomial? Well, it's a trinomial that factors into the same binomial twice. Okay, so it's like x plus three times x plus three. Okay, that makes x squared plus six x plus nine. So that's a perfect square trinomial example. So we're gonna make those by completing the square. So let's apply that to this first example. So what we have here, x squared plus 4x minus 7. You can try and factor that. Good luck. I'm not going to find two numbers that multiply to negative 7 and add to positive 4. Because 7 is prime. It's not possible. We don't even have to think about it. Okay. So what we're going to do is we're going to add that 7 to the other side. So now we have x squared plus 4x. Now leave a space, a big space, and put equals 7. In that space, what you're going to put is plus blank minus blank. The reason I have to do that is because I can't add something to one side unless I subtract it also. Alternatively, which I like to do as well, is put a plus blank on this side and a plus blank on the other side. Both of these are equivalent. Okay. Now, the reason I want to do it this other way is because of the next example. So I'm going to do it where I put the plus and the minus on the same side. What goes in those blanks? Well, what goes in those blanks is half of the middle term squared. That is how you create a perfect square trinomial. You divide the middle coefficient, 4, by 2, which gives you 2, and then you square it. And that gives you 4 again. In this case, it just happened to be the same as the 4. So half the middle term squared is what you put in the blanks. Plus 4, minus 4. Now you say, well, I just cancel those and they're gone. Now I'm back to where I started. No, what you're going to do is you're going to take the negative version and you're going to add it to the other side. Okay? So when we do that, we have the following. And I'll write it up here. x squared plus 4x plus 4 equals 7 plus 4, which is 11. Okay. Now, on the left, we have a perfect square trinomial. And what we're going to do with that is we're going to factor it. Now you don't have to think about how this would factor. It's going to factor the same way every time. It is going to factor like this. x plus 2 times x plus 2. Now that's just the 2 comes from half of the middle term. You will add the half of the middle term to x and that will be both of your factors. When I have the same factor twice, I could just put one of those factors squared. And that equals 11. Now, we already learned in this video this method of square roots. We are going to apply it now because I cannot move forward until I take the square root of both sides. Now remember, if we're going to square root a constant. We have to put it as plus or minus the square root of the constant. On this side, we have x plus 2 squared, square rooted. That just gives us x plus 2. On the other side, we have this radical plus or minus square root of 11. I can't even take anything out of that. It is completely set like that. And the last step is just move the 2 to the other side by subtraction. You're not allowed to combine it with the square root any other way than this. x equals negative 2 plus or minus the square root of 11. So that's our answer to the first one. See how it has a radical in it, just like all our answers from the previous method. Next, we are going to look at this guy. Now this one, the first coefficient is negative 2, and it doesn't look like it can divide that negative 2 by GCF, greatest common factor, out of all the terms. So what I have to do is I have to factor it out of the first two. Move the 31 to the other side first. 
So now I have negative 2x squared plus 16x equals 31. All right. Now I'm going to factor the negative 2 out of these two terms. You have to do this. You cannot skip this step. Negative 2 divided out gives us x squared minus 8x. Now I'm going to leave a space plus blank minus blank. Close the parenthesis equals 31. Notice how that's different than the previous step. There's added work here. Now we will complete this square inside the parentheses. We will divide negative 8 by 2. We get negative 4. And we square that, we get 16. So we will add 16 and subtract 16 next to each other. Now the negative 16, like the negative 4 up here, we want to move to the other side. We can't just move it over there by adding it. We have to multiply it by what I call the gatekeeper, what was factored out of everything on this side in the beginning. So it's like negative 16 wants to go over here and the gatekeeper's like, hey, you got to multiply by me first. So when negative 16 multiplies by negative 2, we get positive 32. Okay? So we've got negative 2 x squared minus 8x plus 16. Now when I've pulled this out, it's plus 32 equals 31. And what I'm going to do now is I'm going to subtract it to the other side. Negative 2 x squared minus 8x plus 16. Now we're going to subtract this 32 so it's over here on the other side. Negative, uh, 31 minus 32, what's that? Negative 1. Negative 1. Okay. Now we need to simplify. Okay. Let's get that negative 2 out of here. And that's no problem. What we're going to do is divide both sides by negative 2. That gets rid of the negative, which would have been a huge problem when it was time to square root. So now we have 1 half over here. Well, what do we have on this side? Well, what we have is a perfect square trinomial. What we're going to end up doing with that is writing it as two binomials that are the same type, so we can square one of them. Again, it's half of the middle term added to x, the middle coefficient, added to x. That would be negative 4. Aha, there we go. Now we will square root both sides. Plus or minus must be included over here. Then I have, say so square root something squared, it's just the thing inside. x minus 4 equals plus or minus square root 1 half. Then we will add the 4 to the other side. So our final answers will be that x equals 4. Notice how I'm always putting the rational number first, then plus or minus the irrational number, 1 half. Now I know there's multiple ways to write the square root of 1 half. It's not necessary in this video to discuss the various types. So there we go. x equals 4 plus or minus the square root of 1 half. This is the method of completing the square. All right, guys, and here's our last method, the infamous quadratic formula. This can be used no matter what, if you could factor it, if you can't factor it, but it's annoying, and it can be quite a... Um, pain to simplify the expression you have to simplify, which is over here. And so some people avoid this and use it at, la at, at uh, last resort. However, the completing the square method does the exact same thing. Um, some people prefer the quadratic formula because they can remember that expression rather than the completing the square method. You can memorize it easier. So I'm going to do this first example, which is the same as my first example from the previous method completing the square. Now we don't have to move anything around, we just want to get things in standard form, and this expression is in standard form. What we have to determine is what a, b, and c are. a, of course, is the coefficient of the first term, so our a in this example is 1. b is the coefficient of the middle term, x, and that's 4. And then c is the coefficient of the constant term, negative 7. So, here we have our constants. Now we just plug them into the formula. It's very straightforward. That's why some people like it. So negative b, that'll be negative 4 plus or minus the square root of b squared, which is 16 minus 
4ac. So that's 4 times 1 times negative 7. So that's minus negative 28 or plus 28. Okay, I multiplied those together, that's what I got. Then divided by 2a, all divided by 2a, so that's 2 times 1, that's 2. Okay, now our only job is to simplify this expression as much as we can. So, let's start with the uh, what's called the discriminant. This b squared minus 4ac is called the discriminant. We'll simplify that to one number, what's 16 plus 28 people? It looks to me like 44. Negative 4 plus or minus the square root of 44 over 2. Then we will try and pull out everything we can from the square root. And in this case, 44 is 4 times 11. I can pull out that 4. I have to square root it while I do that. And so I get 2. And then what's still inside is 11. So I have negative 4 plus or minus 2 root 11 over 2. Now the next thing most people do is split this into two fractions and simplify further. So I got negative 4 over 2 plus or minus 2 root 11 over 2. And you can see that those twos are going to cancel and this first term is going to simplify to 2 over 1. Which gives us our result from the last step, uh, the last method when we did this problem, negative 2 plus or minus the square root of 11. So that's as you can see, it gives you the same answer as completing the square. Next, we're going to try this much more scary looking one. But it's really not that much scarier because uh, we will just determine what a, b, and c are and plug them into the formula. So first things first, it's not in standard form because of this constant. So I'm going to add that to the other side because it's negative 10. I'm going to add 10 to both sides. So now I get 2x squared minus 7x minus 3. Try as you might, you're not going to be able to factor that, okay? So you can either complete the square or you can use the quadratic formula. And that's what we're going to do here. A, the coefficient of the first term is 2. B, the coefficient of the middle term, the x term, is negative 7. And C, the constant term, is negative 3. So let's plug those in. So x is going to equal negative b, that's positive 7, plus or minus the square root of Negative 7 squared, that's 49. You're squaring the negative, that's why you always get a positive there. Minus, then we have 4 times a times c. So 4 times 2 times negative 3. What's 4 times 2? 8. What's 8 times negative 3? Negative 24. So again, we get a positive. 24. Over, all over 2a, that would be um, 2 times 2, that'd be 4. Okay, so this looks like it's going to be a nasty fraction. That's fine. So we have 7 plus or minus the square root of 73 over 4. You can leave your answer like this if it's more simple. And I believe it is because if we were to split this up into two fractions, we couldn't simplify anything. We'd have 7 fourths plus or minus the square root of 73 over 4. Either of these two answers are correct. So there's no need to bicker about which one's better. They both are equivalent. So there is the quadratic formula. Straightforward, but rather annoying to simplify. So it's your choice when you use this or completing the square. All right, guys, thank you so much for watching my series on solving quadratic equations. Um, tune in for more videos soon. This is Falconator signing out.